All right, so this video is just for me here. Uh, this is probably not gonna go on YouTube, but there's my ride height sensor for this one. I have it zip tied in the rest of these ride height sensors, which go up there and into the trunk. They split off and the two front ones go this way and they're zip tied there to the speed sensor bracket and along down here to the e-brake and the two front ones continue down the e-brake all the way till I get to the front so I believe I have to disconnect the two front ones from inside the trunk and this video is just for reference to see where they're zip tied where I have them routed so I could do the same thing in reverse when I'm putting them back on. Next step is to drain your oil. Next step is to drain the coolant. Next step is to take off the rear calipers. You do that with a 14 millimeter. Two places you gotta take off the emergency brake covers in the rear. And in my case, I have to take off my height sensors. I have them connected right to the sway bar, so I'll be disconnecting them from there. Uh, for anybody that has air suspension with ride height sensors, you'll have to do this also, if you have them mounted the same as I do. Disconnecting the O2 sensors. This one that comes from the front bank is the left plug up there and the right plug is for this one which is coming from the rear bank so disconnect the plugs from up there okay so I was wrong about taking off the calipers to hang them by a zip tie because the brake lines go through the hub so you have to disconnect the brake line from here and then when you take uh, down the subframe you'll be disconnecting the suspension from here from that lower through bolt and the calipers will just come with the engine on its way out so disconnecting that once you disconnect the brake line cap it off so it doesn't drip all over the place and then there's this clip here which you have to move so you just stick a screwdriver in there turn it and it comes out an alternative would be to take out the banjo bolt right there and feed it through the hub here assembly and take off that bracket and let it hang. Next you remove the air box. So now I'm just going to start disconnecting whatever I can that it's going to need to come off. I haven't decided uh, if it's better to pull the wiring harness through the firewall, uh, disconnect it from the ECOs and ECUs and drop it down with the engine, or if it's better to disconnect everything individually from the engine. Uh, again, I've never done this on one of these cars before. Um, I've only dropped the motor out once on a K-Series. Uh, when I was building a DC5 Type S, I blew up the K20, put a K24 in it uh, with a K20 head and, and boosted it. That was a pretty simple thing. Um, there wasn't a lot of big mess of wiring harness on that so I just disconnected everything from the small block and it was easy to reach around everything there was a little more room in the RSX uh, so anyway um, I'm gonna start disconnecting coolant lines uh, whatever these coolant hoses are I've heard there's 22 coolant hoses on this car I believe in total I haven't counted um, I'm gonna replace them with silicone ones and I'll start disconnecting wiring harnesses from wherever I think is easiest at the time I might be disconnecting them and replugging them in once I realize that it might be easier to take it through the firewall. I also have to disconnect the fuel lines. And I think I might have to take this target brace off just to make it a little easier. Okay, so I've decided to unplug everything from this ECU. I'm going to take off this other panel here on the side. And I'm going to attempt to shove each of the harnesses through the bulkhead and then just drop down the engine with it because there's a lot of plugs that are hard to reach on this thing so now I'm going to undo the hoses coolant hoses uh, from wherever it's easier to reach some might be over here 
Some might be over here by the firewall. Um, the fuse box seems to have a bunch of clips underneath that I'll undo, as well as where the harness is bracketed to the chassis there, and uh, anywhere else to the frame or anything like that where anything's attached to free up the engine. This hose right here on the throttle body needs to come off. Coolant hoses are off. I could tell the last person that was in here that changed the hoses. They seem pretty good. But if you look close, it's all marred up from whoever changed them last time. So when the engine's out, I'm going to try to smooth those up a little bit uh, just to prevent any leaks. So you don't want to use that. When you're taking off your coolant hoses, don't use a pick or a screwdriver uh, too aggressively anyway. I mean, do what you have to do, but I was able to just grab them by hand and pull them off. You know, no reason to mar the aluminum. As far as the fuse box goes, took off all the brackets, so it's loose, but... I had to go underneath to get off these uh, two plugs down there, and I'm still not sure what else is going to be hanging me up there. I'm jumping over to these, uh, this uh, throttle body has these secondary air injection line things here, and they're all numbered. I'm trying not to have to disconnect individual things if I don't have to, so that brings me to this box here, and that box... I just undid that bolt down here, and I'm going to see what else I can unplug and unbolt and uh, try to do as little as possible to get this out of here. I unplugged these two plugs from that so far. Those are actually pretty easy to come off. A lot of the plugs on this car, they're brittle plastic, you know, 25 years old, had a lot of heat cycles on them. So, I got to be gentle, try not to break anything. So far, I've been having a lot of luck, but some of them are hard to get apart. I just gave up on that one. I'm taking a break on that one for a little while. All right, I changed my mind on the way I'm doing this, so I plugged those back in, put the bolt back in, and I ended up just taking out these, uh, I think it's seven hoses. Sorry, no, five hoses right there. They're all numbered. Um, the actual hoses are num numbered, and then if you follow the hard lines, they correlate to these hoses, which are numbered. So that's how I'll know to put them back. I was trying to avoid doing that, but the bracket to get this box off seems like it would be harder to get back on later than it would be to put those hoses on. Um, as far as these plugs here, I really don't want to break them, so I'm going to let them soak overnight and in, uh, in some spray, some silicone, and we'll see what happens. Hopefully tomorrow they'll let loose easier. Uh, the other one was easy. That one wasn't. I'm also going to look up and see if there's another way to do this because there's still looks like clips underneath there that are going to have to come out. So I don't really know how that's done. Um, I might end up unplugging them from the engine block, which again, more plastic clips, which is what I'm trying to avoid. I think the less uh, things you unplug that have been through heat cycles, the less likely you are to break things. So that's uh best case scenario would be to not have to unplug them but they have to get unplugged from somewhere the ones in the interior were easy to take out of the ECU and pushing them through the bulkhead was easy um, so unfortunately the ones in the engine are a little crispy looks like another plug that's gonna have to come out is uh, this one right here straight down here there's a ground right there I'm going to take it off on the engine side instead of the chassis side. So, for the fuse box, uh, there's a couple wires going down there that go right down towards the engine. Down there. So, I'm going to take off this screw, that screw, and that screw, and that should allow these wires to come down. I have one on top there, which is, uh, sorry, the light's too bright there. Uh, that is for my air suspension and uh, that will have to come off as well which I've actually been wanting to reroute that anyway because I have the fuse right there for it and when it blows and I have the rooftop tent on top it's uh, difficult to lift up this hatch cover and change the fuse I can do it I've done it before but it would be nicer if it was in the trunk and easier to access so I don't mind taking that off because I'll be rerouting it anyway 
And again, there may be a better way to do this. I'm sure there's people that have taken these engine out, engines out a bunch of times and will say I'm wrong with what I'm doing, and that's fine. Please comment and let people know um, if there's alternatives that are better than what I'm doing. All right, looks like I was wrong about taking this off because it's still attached here by this where they're crimped on, so you'd have to uncrimp them. So uh, that's not going to happen because this one's running into the car. So I'd either have to figure out where it's running into the car and feed it through, which I'm done with doing that. So uh, I trace this one, it goes directly to the starter, and uh, the starter is right underneath these coolant hoses. So there's the lead on top, the positive. Um, so I'll just take that off.